Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Script Papi channel. Today, we're going to be making a web app that lets you search for things and locations around you based on text and the distance. This is what this looks like. It's a, it's a map. You can search for gyms around you in the city by text. So if I search for UFC, I only have one UFC gym here, another UFC gym here. If I search for MMA, I have one MMA gym here. If I clear it, I get all my pins back and I can just filter out by distance like this. If I go 10 kilometers, the pin over here disappeared. If I go five, I only have two gyms within five kilometers of me. But this is a desktop web app. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna implement the same thing, uh, but for mobile browsers, because everyone uses their phone to browse the internet more than desktop these days. Whenever you're designing a website, you should keep in mind the mobile user first instead of the desktop user. Unless you're working in like some enterprise app or something like that. Okay, so this is the end result. Let's uh, let's get to implementing it. Okay, let's start from scratch. Opening the terminal and creating a new React project using this command: create React app gym finder. And I'm gonna show you how to implement this from the scratch. If you're not familiar with it, create React app is one of, is, is the best way to uh, start a React project. It sets up all the dependencies in one go, and you can just start coding right away your React app. It's great, check it out. I'll drop the link in the, in the description. This is the dependency that we're gonna need. MU, MUI is material UI. This is this great library over here. Provide you with ready components that you can just slap in your website. They look beautiful, they fit in any website. They make your website have the same buttons. Check it out, I'll drop the link in the description box as well. We're gonna use the Google Map React NPM library, which gives us a map. And we're gonna need, in order to use that, we're gonna need uh, Google Maps API key. The instructions for getting it are in this page. I'll drop it in the description box. You can follow the instructions to get the API key. And we're also gonna need the React Router DOM to manage the routing between the pages in the web app. Okay, the project is now set up, let's open it. Okay, this is our new React project. It's open in, uh, in, in a mobile web view. This is the code. I'm gonna first start by cleaning it up, structuring the way that, I'm, that I want. So first thing I'll do is I'll grab this uh, app function from the app.js file and I'll move it right here directly in this file. And then I will uh, get rid of the imports because I'm putting it directly. I'll get rid of all of this. Here it's complaining about the logo not, be, not defined, so I'm just gonna get rid of the logo. This is the page loading without a style. I'm just gonna get rid of all of this and just replace it with the placeholder h1 element okay let's keep it like this for now and then i'm going to clean the files that i don't need which is this 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 and this i don't like having a lot of files in my project that i don't use in order to get the map to work you need to you need to remove react strict mode so get rid of that open a new terminal here and start installing the dependencies the instruction for installing material ui can be found here on the installation page just follow that i'm also installing google map react at the same time and the react router dom library also Okay, I've installed all the dependencies. Now I need to start creating my views. Let's go ahead here and create a new JavaScript file called gem that will contain that will have the gem page and another one called map that will contain the map. Just fill these up with regular React component. Like here, just map, component that has h1 for map. And here, just copy the same thing. Go to the gem, just change it to say gem instead. That's a placeholder for now. So we just did step three. Now we need to do step four, which is creating the router. Go to index, import the views that you just created. So import map from dot map. Same thing with the gym. Gym, gym. Now here, remove everything and just set up the router. Do that. Import the router classes from React Router DOM, just like this. And your router will just look like this. Here's your map. Here's your gym. Save, refresh, and now see what happens. Now it just says map instead of saying uh, whatever we had previously. Now if you go to gym. Notice the gem. Notice that the gem path. It looks like this. Look, gem slash gem ID. This is because the gem component requires that an ID gets popular here, a parameter. This is how I can manage parameters in my React Router DOM library by specifying like this in the path. So what that looks like is that if I want to navigate to a gem, I'll just do slash gem slash some number like three one three, and then it will show gem. But if I don't put anything there. The page will, lo will not load because this is a, a map app and we're gonna have different gems in the map we what we do is that when we click on a gem it's gonna take us to a page that describes that gem and have the details about the gem and this is why there has to be a parameter that specify the gem id and the in the path okay so we set up the router now we can start coding and making the website actually has con ha having content okay so this is our empty page for the map i'm gonna place a uh, 
a header here that will have the search bar and the map right under it. So let's get working on that. I will need two depth, one for the header, one for the map. Set a background color for each so that they you can tell how they look like on the uh, on the web view here. And when you're working on your, web, on your web app, it's better to separate everything in a component. So I'll make a component for the header and another for the place each depth and its appropriate components. And over here, I'll just put the uh, method that renders them. Okay, first thing is the header. I need to have a logo here, a search bar, and uh, a couple buttons and a slider. I'll use typography for the text that I'm, that's gonna make up the logo. It's here, use it, it's gonna say gym finder. It's gonna be itch, for next. I'm gonna grab one of these text fields for material UI. Just grab the outline basic one, throw it here too. Now this one will say search for a gym. Now I need a slider. Go back to material UI, go click on slider and just grab the sample here. Same thing, import it, place it here, clean it up. Now I need a couple of buttons, one for recent, one for search, but I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna need to put them side by side. So I'm gonna create a dev here, grab my buttons from here. Import, grab the components too. I need one that is contained and one that is outlined. This is gonna say reset. This is gonna say search. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now let's organize everything. First of all, for the text, I need it to be in the center. So here's do style, uh, text, align, center. Okay, that's done. First for the text field, I want it to fill the whole thing. So I'll just do style with just 100%. That did it. Now for the slider, I want to do the same thing that I did for the buttons. I want to have like a, I want to make it user friendly. So I'm going to also place it inside diff and just put the word distance next to it. So like this, I'll use typography again for the text distance, but I want them to be next to each other and it's not doing that. So in order to do that, I need to set the width for the slider. So style width, let's make it 75%. Oops, there's a typo in width. There we go. But I need to make them next to each other. So in order to do that, just go here in style and set display flex then flex direction explicitly to row and then see how it looks like and then do justify content to be space between okay then also to make them on the same line aligned do align items center now it looks decent now for the buttons you need to, I need them equal to be the same size and next to each other. So here, just add dial, set the width to 50% here and here. There you go, that looks better. Now I need to add logos for the buttons. So for that, just go to material UI here, search for a search icon, click on it, find the import text here, just go back, import it, grab that search icon text and just over here, just place it directly. That looks better. Do the same with reset, search for reset. Let's choose this, import it, place it here, grab the restart alt icon and just throw it here. That looks better. Let's get rid of the pink color now. Let's style this, let's add a background color to the whole thing. So just go here, do style and then background color will be beige. Just like that previous example in the, in the start of the video. Okay, cool. We got everything, we got the slider, we got this search. Now let's add the map. Implementing the map is very easy. Just go to the NPM page for Google Map React and here you can find the instructions for how to implement the map. And here you can find an example. Just copy that example, slap it here. Don't forget to also import the class here. Now there are a few things missing that we need to fill up. So just get rid of this for now. We're gonna add it later and explain it later. Add the key that you obtain from Google console. This is the Google Maps API key. This is it for me. Now default center and default zoom. To know what those are, just go back to the sample here. And here will tell you that default center, if you just follow it here, you see default center is just an object that has a lat and long uh, parameters. So just copy this and there you go. As for default zoom, you can see that default zoom is just a number here. So I'm just gonna put 14. Now save. The map is now appearing. The reason is we're not setting the height explicitly. So let's do that. Let's just set height to be 100%. Nah, it doesn't work explicitly. So 80 VH. Now this works. It looks like our center location is South India. Cool. So we got the map to work. We got the map to work, but my center location is not India. So let's fix that. Let's make this map center on my current location now. Uh, so in order to do that, you need first to add a constructor to this component like this and then here you will have a latitude and a longitude state variables. So just throw them there and here you need to leverage the component did mount method to get the location. How? Like this. You're gonna get the location using this. This will get the location 
and your coordinates specifically, latitude and longitude. You can also get altitude and other stuff. And you can update the state variable using what you get here from the browser. Uh, let's print it out in the console and see what it looks like for educational purpose. There you go. It's get printed here in the console. You can see this is my this is the accuracy, altitude, altitude accuracy, heading, latitude, longitude, speed, but speed and altitude is null. I guess because I'm in a flat uh, area. So we got the location. Now we need to just recenter the map to this coordinates. So you need to go back all the way down to map here and there will be a prop called center and it will have also a lat which is going to be this state latitude and long which is going to be this state longitude now if we save and refresh the page it recenters the map to dubai which is my current location nice so that's that. I'm gonna organize my map like this just to be consistent. Now let's just do the final touch for getting the current location, which is uh, setting the pin in the map for my current location. So in order to do that, just go go back to Material UI, Icons, just, just find something that appropriately identifies the location. I'll use this one. Copy it, import it, grab it, go to the map here. You're gonna place it like this, and what you're gonna do is that you're just gonna add the props lat and you're gonna set it equal to the state variable latitude same thing with long i'm gonna add this prop too as well so i can so you can have a color so let's save and refresh wait for it to get the location now it's recentering to my location with the pin in there so that is done looks great okay now the map is mostly ready it would be nice to put some data in it and in order to do that we have some sample data over here for sample gems i have one two three five gems each gym object has an ID, a name, and a latitude and longitude that's going to place it on the map. Now, you might be wondering, how did you get the latitude and the longitude? You just got to go to Google Maps, the real one, and then uh, let's, do, let's, for example, search for gyms. Okay. Let's take... That's such a great name. <laughs> let's take this gym as an example. You'll have to just right click on it and then you will see the latitude and longitude here. So let's add it. Let's add it to the samples. So just copy this, All right? Go over here, change this to six, and we'll change the name to fat to fit gym. Then over here you copy click on this to copy it. Then here just go and paste it right here. There you have it. We added now we have six data points that we can play around with. Um and now let's put this on the map. First you need to create a state variable that will hold this gem data. So just go here and add a state variable called gems and it will be set to an empty array. Second, when the component mounts, set that state variable to the sample gem data that you just added. So here you just do gems. Now go to the map and this is where the magic happens. Here, open a function up, go state gems uh, map and then for each gem in this array, what you will do is you will return a component. The component will just be a pin icon. This would be a good one to use. Just copy that, import it. Just copy it here and just do the same thing that you did before, which with the with the my location pin. Add the latitude and longitude, but instead of coming from the state variable, it's gonna be coming from gem. Like this. Now save and refresh. The pins are now showing up here. Nice. Just I'll do this to change the color. I'll make the color secondary and I'll also add text to them and the text is going to be gem dot name save here it is now it's purple instead when you click on it well nothing happens but we're going to make something happen now we need to display the name of each gem when we click on it now bear with me here for a little bit this is going to have uh this is, get, this is going to require some work so let's start from the top on the state variable you need to add a new state variable called selected gem id and this is going to be null by default. Now go back to map. On the pen that, is, that are already rendered, you need to add a onClick probe. That will say, when you click on the pen, it's going to set the state to the ID of the selected. Now here, we need to open another function. So here we're going to also, again, loop through the gem. But instead of rendering other pens, what we will say is that if the selected gem ID state is equal to the gem ID of what we're looping through, then you will return a def component that has a tip text inside it that will say the gem name. Else, 
you'll return nothing. Save this, let's see how it goes. And my balloon. So this is my balloon. I just need to pass the latitude and the longitude here as well. But not coming from the state, coming from gym. Very simple. Let's try it again. Now when I click on the gym, the name is right above that gym. But I need to set a white background because this looks too ugly. So just add a white background color, white. Also, let's set the width to 100. And when I click on it, you go. You're getting the name of the gym right above the pin when you click on it. That's great. But when I click off of it, the name sticks there, which is kind of annoying. So I need to handle what happens when I click outside of that. To do that, just here on your map component, handle on click. And what will happen when you click outside is you will simply set the selected gym ID to null again. So let's try this out. Click. That's not working. Ladies and gentlemen, we discovered that this map library has an annoying problem that when you use it on a mobile view and you try to click on one of the markers, it also clicks on the map itself. This is why when I try to handle uh, the click on the map here to, do, to hide the balloon, it didn't work because I was click on the marker to pull up the balloon and then hide it at the same time. How do I know this is because I added a console here print and you can notice that when I click on the map it also clicks on the map which is annoying so we are gonna have to implement a workaround for this one workaround that I consider is to just have an X on the balloon itself to click on it to remove it but that's not really convenient to the user but ideal experience is when you click on the map the balloon disappears so let's uh, so I have an I so I have an idea to handle that and here it is I'm gonna add a switch that tells my app that we clicked on a marker so don't just go hide it right away okay hide it only if the user clicks again on the map so on the second click I will hide the balloon not on the first click that's happening right now this is a workaround a hack uh, there has to be a better way to do this but for the purpose of keeping this video going this is what we'll do and here's how we're gonna do it so over here in the state variable add a state variable called marker click and set it to false right save that now here when you click on a gem marker you will not sele set selected gem ID to the gem ID only you'll also set marker click to true okay now here we need to do a we need to implement a click outside method that will handle the click outside marker or let's call it more appropriate yeah this is gonna go here this is gonna go here and these are the values returned by that on click function uh, that we gotta handle here but we're not gonna use really any of them so here we'll just do two things here we're gonna say if the marker is clicked you will set selected gem ID to null and you will set marker clicked to false otherwise otherwise do nothing okay now let's try this solution out I click on it okay it's gone now I click on marker I click on the map it's gone I click on the map nothing happens I click on a marker here it is I click on another marker you have to click double click on the marker so this is the limitation with this solution is that you gotta double click on other markers. Okay, now we got the locations, we got their balloons, the map is working, it's beautiful. Now, let's start implementing the search feature. I'm gonna change this so that you can be able to filter out the gyms in here in the map with text. So you enter some text, click search, and then it filters out. So let's do that. So first, I need to add a little bit of space here between the map and the buttons so it'll look nicer. So over here in header, I'll just go, I'll say style, and I'll just say margin bottom five or ten better i like it this is, this is better okay cool so back to the search text so go to header go to return and just find your text field right here and handle on change to be event equal this set state and then you're gonna add a Add a uh, state variable called search text and you're gonna set it to event target value okay cool so search text is gonna be your state variable that contains the search text put it here 
set it to this save now you need to implement the uh, the action for the search button so over here is just do on click and make it say search or handle search and then over here inside header define handle search and here what you would do is that you would say let filtered gyms filter gym is going to be gym data right and then you're going to filter that and then here you're going to filter g inside here you're going to you're going to set the rule for the filtering and the rule will be if the gem name contains the search text so g name to lowercase make sure whenever you search anything with text in any web app you always use the lowercase so that you exclude any errors that relates to the case of the search and then you say include this state search text to lowercase as well so this will give you the gems that contain that substring and then you can set that as the variable here set state gems equal to filter gems now let's try it out and see what happens okay let's say mma search boom we got this only now let's say nothing search we get everything back let's say ufc search you got the ufc gym over here and the ufc gym all the way up here nice so that's the search text okay now let's change it so that it'll, it'll be able to filter by by um, by distance first did you see that blue thing over there um so we should just remove that because i don't want that back ugly background color to show up whenever this page loads so now the background is page which is much better nice so let's implement the distance filter so this is the distance filter i need to create a also a state variable for that called distance and it will be set by default to let's say 40. okay that's 40 kilometers and here at the we go at the slider we need to make some modifications on this so first uh, there's different types of sliders offered by Material UI. What we have right now is a smooth slider, which is inappropriate for the purpose of this map. We had a slider with steps, like this one over here, with discrete st uh, with discrete steps. So this is great. Let's grab this and use it, and clean it up. Remove the things that we don't need. Default value is going to be this state. Eh, it's going to be. We're going to replace default value by just value. And we're gonna say this state distance is the default is the value. Uh, we don't need this. We don't need. Well, we'll keep this. This is better. I need around yeah ten steps is good. Uh, marks, which for the steps, and I need zero to to start at zero and ends at fifty kilometers because that's all we need. So it's gonna be five uh, steps. Actually, let's make it five. That's better. Okay, now we have the steps. If I try to drag this, so if I try to drag, drag this, nothing happens. This is why I because I didn't handle on change. So here on change, you will do. You'll have two values: event and value, and you want to set the state distance to that value, which is a number. Save. Now let's try it out. Now it's working. Okay. Since this is working, now we can try. Now we get it. Since this is working, now we gotta update our uh, filter logic to include that as well. So here, I'm already filtering by the name. I need to just add another condition. So do and and open another brace braces. And here, you will say, uh, well, you will need something that get the distance between two longitude and latitudes and uh, transfer the distance and compare that. What you will need is this. You will need this method. This method is a mathematical equation that given two latitudes and longitudes, it will give you the distance between them in kilometers. So just copy paste it here. I don't know how exactly this works. I'm really bad at math. I'm just gonna, I'm, all I need is, all I, all I know is this is going to return the distance. I'm going to use that to compare. So just grab this distance, implementer here, and here you will use this and say the first latitude is going to be your current location. Latitude. Of course, your longitude, which is a state variable as well. Then the gym. Latitude and the gym longitude. And you will say that if this is smaller than 
the distance set by the filter, so this state distance, then include it in the filtered result, otherwise excluded. So I add this here, and just to organize the code, let's put this put it this way. Okay, now let's test this out. See what happens. If I filter all the way to five, or actually I filter all the way to zero, but if I filter all the way to five, I have two gym, uh, three gyms within five kilometers. These gyms all the way up here in the city disappeared, but if I do 50, now these gyms appear. Now let's do 20, 30, I mean 15. Looks like the distance between me and over here is around 15 kilometers. Uh, let's do 10. Let's do 5. Now these are gone. And 0, just removes them all together. Okay, so the f distance filter is working. Now we just need to implement the reset button instead of having to re put this all the way back here. The user can click the reset button and reset everything back to its default state. So for that, very simple. Just create a method here called reset all. And what it will do is just it will set the state of everything back to normal. So gems is going to be back to gem data. Distance is going to be back to, what was it, 40? Yeah. And search text is going to be back to uh, an empty string. So save this and grab this, slap it on the reset button right here. So on click will be just that. Now let's try it out. So let's try doing this. Search reset brings it back. Nice. Let's try searching UFC within 10 kilometer search. Only one jump over here. Reset brings everything back. Cool. But this did not update because I need to set the value for the text field. So value should be this state. Okay. Now if I do try it, now if I try that again, UFC within five kilometer set reset, change it back to how it was. So that's how to search for the distance and how to reset everything, which is great. Simple to implement as you can see. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the last thing to do in order to make this a fully functional map app, which is to give it the ability to, uh, to, to give each gem in this page its own dedicated page. So when you click on a gem name, it takes it to a separate page. Just for that gem, we can display details about the gem. For example, like what their opening hours or whatever. So, but I'm gonna do it a very simple way. I'm just gonna display the name of the gem in the next page. The idea is to have a dedicated page for each item in the map. So, in order to do that, uh, let's use the router that we implemented earlier. Now you're gonna see the point of that router. Uh, first thing, note that I just that I made the balloons for the uh, for the gym names look prettier. All I had to do in order to achieve this is just I added uh, a little bit of padding. And uh, I sent you the text here. Let me show you. It's right, um, right here. So what I did is that is I just added padding to it, and I did added border radius to give it this little nice curve. And for the text, I just set text aligned to center. Okay. Enough of that. Now let's get to the point. L uh, I want what I want to do is that when you click on this, I go to another page, which is this one, and have the gym name display there. So in order to do that. Let's implement a method here called handle gym click. And this will take in a gym parameter. And uh, what this will do is that it will just say window location replace. And then we'll just replace the current URL with the URL of the gym details. So gym.id. And we just grab this and then go here in the dev and implement on click method. On click. And you will just say. This is it, and here you just pass the gym. Okay, that's all you gotta do here. Save, and then now try it out. Click on the gym, takes me to that gym. But it says here undefined. I made a mistake then. Uh, what did we do? Oh, stupid, I passed gym data instead of gym. So just pass gym. Save, now try it again. Okay, click on the gym, click on it. Now we, we, we get redirected to the gym page, and here you can see the gym ID has been appended to the URL. Okay, now let's go to the gym component and, hand, and display the uh, gym name over there. So here, I'm just gonna say gym, um, and then here I'll put state variable called state gym name. And here, I'll need to add a constructor. This is what my constructor looks like, just to take gym name here, and let's make it an empty string for now. Now we need to get the number four from the URL. 
And so in order to do that, we use component did mount, and we simply need to use these two lines of code to get the gym name, to get the gym ID from the URL. See, what this does is that it gets the URL, it splits it by the slash, and then you will get an array. And the array will contain uh, localhost, gym, and four. Then use pop to get just the four, the last item in the array. So that's the first step. Second step, um, here, get gym ID. The second step is you cross-reference using the gym ID with the list of data that you had from earlier which we should copy over here as well. So just grab this data for demo purposes. In real life, you won't be, cop you won't be checking this array. You'll just be cross-referencing with your cloud storage, or your server, or your database, or whatever. So here, we look for the uh, items that has ID 4, and then this will return an array that contains one item, because we only have one item with the ID 4. And then you need to get the first item in that array. This is why there's a zero here, right? So this is the selected gem. So get the gem object. So now we need to set that to be the state. So set state to selected gem is gonna be just a, no, sorry, gem name is gonna be selected gem dot name. Okay, now save. There you go, now it worked. Now let's go back to our original map and try it from there so we can see how this thing works end to end. Okay, let's click on uh, TKMMA. Click on it. Here, you get TKMMA. Let's try it again. Uh, let's try UFC Gym. Click on it, you get UFC Gym. That's it. So now we finally finished work, uh, working on this beautiful map app. It's very simple. It takes like 30 minutes to implement. I'm, I bet you can implement it in like 15 minutes if you were on your own and you didn't have to hear me talk with every step. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and uh, and comment. Ask any questions you would like to ask. Free, feel free to suggest ideas for future videos. And if you if you need this uh, source code, please check out my Patreon. Subscribe there, support the channel, and you also get the full source code for this video and all the other videos. Hope you enjoyed this. And see you later in my next video. Bye bye.